Hello. So we're here in New Stanton, Pennsylvania, and I wanted to talk a minute about what every new RVer needs to know. Uh, I follow a lot of the forums on Facebook and elsewhere and see a lot of the comments and problems, especially from new RVers, new part-timers, new full-timers, uh, having some what they consider to be major issues and uh, freaking out. Basically, people who buy new RVs and freak out uh, that there are problems. Um, and as I've spoken about in a previous video, those problems are to be expected, most of them. 90, 95% of them you can fix yourself. They aren't really a big deal, but you need to go in eyes wide open. And anytime you buy an RV, especially a new RV, uh, you're going to have lots of bugs to work through, and you're going to be the one working through those bugs. It's not going to be the dealer. It's not going to be the manufacturer. It's going to be you. A lot of people think that they're not going to have any problems, and if they do have problems, well, they'll just call the dealer and take it in and have it fixed under warranty. Well, that's not reality. Uh, you know, you could be waiting four, five, six months to get into the dealer, and then you could be without your RV for months. Most people, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, especially for relatively minor issues. A lot of times, um, you know, water leaks are very common and very normal, uh, especially, again, with a new RV. Uh, you you want to make sure you know you're not running your water pump while you're driving down the road, or you can end up with a giant mess on your hands if you have water in your fresh water tank and it's and then there's a leak that, that pops up and you're having to deal with that. Especially when your RV is new, you're going to have uh, plumbing fittings that will loosen, and you're going to have to tighten those up, and that's just the nature of the beast. And sometimes you're even going to have. Uh, fittings that may break and you may need to replace and that's why you need to carry pecs with you you need to carry the tools to deal with the plumbing you need to carry the you know even shark bite fittings to uh you know interconnect those the that plumbing those plumbing fixtures you're going to have trim that's going to come down while you're driving this isn't a house you're driving it down the road uh 60 65 miles an hour hopefully not much more than that if it's a if it's a big rv a lot of people uh create their own issues by driving way too fast on roads that uh, are going to do a lot more damage to your RV than they would otherwise need to if you were driving uh, at a reasonable speed uh, so as not to subject your RV to you know getting beat to death but even a typical RV driving down the road that's equivalent to a three or four or perhaps even more on the Richter scale um, so it's not a house that's sitting stationary it's constantly exposed to vibration and damage and you've got to be prepared to fix those things and you've got to have the tools on board to, to deal with that so um, let's talk a minute about tools you need to have um, you know you need to have a drill uh, you need to have bits all kinds of phillips uh, hex bits square bits star bits flathead to uh, deal with the uh, the screws that they have in the rv a lot of times the trim is just held with staples um, you can bring a hammer and nails. Sometimes that will make sense. A lot of times I'll just replace uh, replace them with screws uh, because screws are going to hold a lot better. You just obviously need to make sure what you're screwing into. You want to have a good multimeter with you. You can measure voltage. Uh, you may need to check uh, outlets and AC voltage. Make sure that that's sufficient. You may need to check DC voltage. You may need to test fuses. You may need to ensure that voltage is getting to equipment like uh, pumps or control boards, anything like that, lights. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you may need to end up testing for. I carry an inspection scope where you can, uh, you know, stick it in a cavity that you can't fit into, uh, take a look and see what's going on in there because RVs have lots of small spaces that are behind walls or in the floor. Uh, you, need to, you need to be able to get to and inspect some things to find issues sometimes. And I highly recommend carrying an impact wrench and uh, large sockets so you can deal with, uh, you know, tire changes and things like that on your own. Most of these tires, you're not going to be able to get off if they've been, you know, uh, torqued sufficiently. You're going to have a hard time getting those off sometimes by hand, so um, it, it's always good to have an impact wrench. Carry some uh, road lights and flares, um, a reflective vest, uh, you know, if you're stuck on the side of the road dealing with issues, it's good, just best to be prepared uh, for as many eventualities as you can. You want to have a broom or a leaf blower to clean off the roof. Really, when you buy a new RV, the dealer should train you on what to expect. You should expect issues. They should provide basic repair training if you don't already have it, but in the end, it's you that's having to deal with these issues. It's you at the campsite. It's you who's going to have to work through these issues. Uh, Facebook groups are great. Um, you know, YouTube videos are great to learn how to do things on your RV. 
um, but experience is, is even better and, and you're going to learn um, either the hard way or the easy way and if you're prepared and you're expecting to have problems then it's going to be uh, a lot easier than if you're not expecting to have them. It's just the nature of the beast. Any RV, especially new RVs, are going to have problems that you're going to have to work through. Another thing you need to take with you is a ladder. Uh, that you can climb up along the side of your RV and uh, effect some repairs. But one thing on all new RVs that you'll want to do is uh, inspect and probably reseal the top of every window and door and anything that penetrates the sidewall of an RV. You will find that from the factory they very rarely have sufficient sealant and you will have water leaks in your windows. Uh, when you have heavy rains and that can create a lot more damage because if it gets under the window frame it will enter the wall and then you can have delamination issues which is a major issue that you don't want to deal with so just make sure to keep water out uh, inspect your roof frequently you should be inspecting your roof uh, every time you pack up camp if possible uh, you want to go up there and uh, make sure that nothing has fallen on it nothing has fallen on top of your slides before you run your slides in you want to just briefly inspect your uh, sealant your your decor along all the intrusions in the roof membrane and make sure that those are haven't dried and cracked you especially have to watch that if you're in uh, low humidity areas out west uh, it will dry up more rapidly and you'll need to uh, stay on top of that you know if it cracks it's no big deal just put another layer on it but you need to make sure that you're not you don't have any water intrusion from the roof or the sidewalls in your rv because that can cause major damage Stay on top of your, your tires, you know, make sure that um, they're in good condition, inspect them before every trip. Uh, preferably have a TPMS system to monitor the tire pressure. Um, make sure it's at least a decent brand. A lot of RVs come with what they call China Bombs, which are junk tires. Um, you know, do your due diligence, read reviews, uh, try to make sure that you don't have any that are hopefully going to explode on you. Replace them if you need to. But the take-home lesson is go into an RV purchase eyes wide open. You will have issues. They're RVs. That's the way, that's the nature of the beast. And you need to be prepared to fix them. You need to have the tools in your rig to deal with these issues. And don't depend on a dealer. Don't depend on a manufacturer. Granted, there are some major issues that might require, you know, maybe um, frame issues or removal of a slide or things like that where you might, you might need some help. Um, sometimes that help isn't even going to come from an RV dealer. Um, a lot of times, like if, if there's a frame issue or suspension issue, you're going to have a, a a trailer shop or welding shop dealing with that. That you know that's going to you're going to be able to get into a lot easier than you will an RV dealer. And frankly, they'll probably be better at fixing those issues than an RV dealer would. When you're talking about inspecting plumbing systems, make sure that wherever your wet bay is, you can get behind it, preferably. Um, a lot of times, you're going to have connections come loose behind the wet bay, and you're going to need to be able to get back there and tighten them. Uh, I've got hours so that I just move a panel. I don't even keep the screws in there. It's it's pretty easy to get to get behind there because you're frequently going to need to inspect uh, and tighten connections back there. You may have to you know get your water pump and clean the filter, replace your water pump. Um, you know, no telling. Keep up with general maintenance to keep everything uh, you know lubricated. It's supposed to be lubricated. Everything sealed. It's supposed to be sealed. Inspect everything frequently. Make sure everything is in in good operable condition. Sometimes, depending on your, your type of slide, sometimes slide outs can require um, maintenance to some degree or another. We have the, uh, the cable slides, and so those have to be aligned and uh, you know, tightened or loosened or maintained on occasion just to make sure everything is, uh, is in good working order. There's a lot in RVing to enjoy. It, it opens up a whole new world uh, of exploration and fun. Um, but, you know, just, just be prepared that uh, some of those uh, adventures are going to be unplanned and uh, are going to be uh, put in your lap to solve. <laughs> Shugu. I can't say enough about Shugu. Shugu is one of the best adhesives that I've ever dealt with. It's, it's excellent. I've been using it for years. I've lost track of the number of things in the RV that I've used Shugu on. <laughs> it's just it's, it's great to have. As a new RVer, checklists are your friends. You will, you will want to develop thorough checklists. We have a pre-trip checklist of about 110 items that we make sure uh, you know we check and verify that everything's in the RV before we leave on a trip. Uh, and then we have uh, you know a, a departure checklist and an arrival checklist. And you want to use those checklists to make sure that you don't miss anything because if you miss things on these RVs, they can be critical and they can be expensive. I'll put a link below to uh, the video of. Uh, some of the issues that we've had with our 2021 voltage. We've been RVing for about eight years 
and this is our third RV. We had a, uh, a class A gas coach. We had a 40 foot uh, diesel pusher and um, now we have this fifth wheel. So we've experienced a, a wide variety of RVs and uh, issues that, that go along with them.